This is Into the Multiverse with Josh Peck. The fourth dimension might actually exist. It, it looks like, at least it sort of seems like, kind of-ish in a way, that we have proof. Welcome to Into the Multiverse. I am your host, Josh Peck. And today uh, is actually the one, technically, the 104th episode. We've done this for uh, every week and for 104 weeks, which means this is the two-year anniversary of the show. Now, we just did a big celebration for the 100th episode uh, four weeks ago, so I don't want to uh, rehash all, all that again, but uh, it's pretty cool. So so this is now two years running, 104th episode. Uh, so interesting stuff. Now, the fourth dimension is something that uh, I've talked about a lot. People who have followed my work, read my books, like Unraveling the Multiverse, or who have even watched uh, earlier episodes of this show, uh, are, are, should be at least somewhat familiar with the fourth dimension. Basically, for those who are brand new, it's the idea that there might exist other directions, other, uh, other spatial dimensions than just the three that we live in. You know, we, we live in three of them. So we have, uh, we have forward and back. You know, each dimension has two directions. So we have forward, back, left, right, up, down. Those are our three dimensions. And then we also have one of time. Uh, so, sometimes time is referred to as the fourth dimension, you know, but that's a temporal or a time dimension, not a spatial or space dimension. So depends on the context. Uh, but what I've always found most interesting is the idea of a fourth spatial dimension, because actually when you read some ancient texts like the Bible and stuff, the way that it talks about uh, heaven and, and stuff like that, there, there's some descriptions that seem to uh, coincide with what scientists talk about when they, when they talk about a fourth dimension, a hypothetical fourth dimension. Um, but so there might actually be proof. Now, when I say might, it's not because the scientists are unsure. They're unsure. They're just not communicating their points very clearly, which is frustrating. Uh, so this, this article comes from RT.com. There's a bunch of articles about this, and they all kind of vary depending who's writing it. And I think it's because uh, nobody really understands. You know, the scientists get it, but they're, they're careful in how they... Uh, uh, communicate, and a lot of times it just comes out garbled and nobody knows what they're talking about. So they basically used something called uh, uh, the quantum hall effect to, to in, a, in a sense, cast a three-dimensional shadow uh, or, or, a, or, or measure a three-dimensional shadow from like a fourth-dimensional like effect. So if you think about it this way, when you put your hand in front of a light and you get a shadow on the wall, that shadow is two-dimensional. Uh, now the shadow isn't actually made of anything, so it's not exactly real, but it does exist. You know, it's the blocking of light. You, it's, it's an effect. You can see the effect. But it's on a two-dimensional surface. So uh, if there were a hypothetical two-dimensional uh, universe, you could cast a shadow of your hand on that universe and they would be able to see just your shadow. You know, they would see the edges of it, but uh, they would be able to see just that shadow. So it's the same kind of idea with this quantum hall effect, uh, which again, it, it depends on what you read and where it, they call it different things and it has to do with magnets and lasers and it, it is kind of a cool topic, but uh, I don't want to waste too much time getting into the technical stuff partly because I don't understand it, <laughs> partly because uh, it would just be kind of boring. But uh, the interesting thing is uh, they might have created a, uh, instead of a two-dimensional shadow, you get a three-dimensional shadow for, from a, a fourth-dimensional effect. So in a sense, um, if I'm understanding this correctly, this is the first time that actual evidence of a fourth spatial dimension is discovered, which is really cool. Now, the unfortunate thing is, like what happens a lot of times when these things are discovered or when there's a new particle, like the God particle, you know, the Higgs boson, it's not communicated properly. It's not communicated well. Uh, so even somebody, you know, a, a layman like me who's really into this stuff and really interested in this stuff, I don't get it. I, I don't. So maybe somebody out there is smarter than me and can explain it to me. I'll link the article in the description below. If this is what it seems like it is, this is a pretty big step forward in scientific understanding uh, and possible scientific advancements in the near future. And that's why it's important because they, they I mean, even this article talks about how uh, potential ways they could utilize the fourth spatial dimension in technologies and things like that, um, if one exists. Uh, they've already been talking about that with quantum computing, possibly if, I mean, that's using quantum entanglement, but if quantum entanglement is really an effect uh, that's four or, or more dimensional in nature, then that, that, that would be something that would be used in, in quantum computing. Uh, so it's, it's really interesting. I, I think it's cool. 
Um, still not, it's still early to, I think too early to really get a handle on it as to what's going on. And the other unfortunate thing is a lot of times when a relatively small discovery is made, some media outlets will try to blow it up and make it this big, huge thing that it's really not. Um, and, uh, so we got to be careful of that too. But anyway, uh, so the article is linked in the description below. I would like to know what you think about this. Uh, it's kind of cool to go back to a topic that uh, we actually talked about in the very first episode, uh, first couple of episodes of Into the Multiverse. So it's, it's uh, good to get back to our roots two years into the show. So I'm very excited about that. I want to thank all of you for watching the show, for sticking with me through these two years, through these 104 episodes. And uh, I'm excited to see what the future will bring. Leave me a comment in the comment section below. Make sure you subscribe, click the little bell, so that you will be notified. YouTube wants to make this as difficult as possible, especially on conservative Christians like myself. So you have to uh, actually uh, tell YouTube. And then, and then just keep checking back. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, I'm on Steemit. I'm on YouTube. I'm everywhere. So you can follow me and uh, uh, see uh, all, all the free material there. That'd be great. Okay, well, till next time, take care and God bless. With all the talk in media today about women's rights to be heard and treated with fairness and decency in all public platforms, Donna Howell's timely new book boldly establishes how it was Jesus Christ himself that settled this issue a long time ago. And at a time when it would have been considered revolutionary and prophetic, Bible scholars know that Jesus, while recognizing appropriate gender roles, intentionally began the first women's empowerment movement. But why did he do that? The answer to that mystery is in the Bible itself. Now in one of the most talked about new releases of the year, The Handmaiden's Conspiracy by best-selling author Donna Howell. The permanent changes Jesus made regarding women's rights their value and their role in delivering his message to the world is brought to light. And if God decides to raise up a radical, he only needs one voice for an entire Great Awakening, and it could be yours. Yeah. This is Reverend Donna Hall. Yeah. Once you read The Handmaiden's Conspiracy, you'll never think about the church that Jesus Christ started and that his apostles decreed in the same way again. The Handmaiden's Conspiracy, available March 1st at skywatchtv.com. Follow the cultural and historic backdrop behind Paul's words in the New Testament that correct the record on some of the most misinterpreted scriptures in modern history in relation to the issue of women, their leadership role in the church, and understand properly what Paul was responding to when the epistles were written. Skywatch TV is proud to announce one of the most anticipated, talked about new releases of the year, The Handmaiden's Conspiracy promotional offer. When you order The Handmaiden's Conspiracy from Skywatch TV, you'll receive Skywatch TV's brand new, beautifully bound, limited edition, red letter, King James version of the Holy Bible with Apocrypha. In addition to the Old and New Testaments, this never before released, one of a kind deluxe collector's Bible includes the ancient apocryphal books like Enoch, Jubilees, and 15 more ancient texts that the disciples of Christ read and quoted from. This gorgeous limited edition Bible is available exclusively from Skywatch TV and holds a retail value of $80. Yours absolutely free for a limited time. That's right, absolutely free when you purchase the Handmaiden's Conspiracy promotional offer. Also included in this once in a lifetime offer is the Donna Howell collection that includes all three of her runaway best-selling works, Radicals, Redeemed Unredeemable, and Final Fire. Sold separately, this unprecedented promotional offer retails for $160. Yours now for only $29.95 plus shipping and handling. This is one of the most exciting promotional offers we've made available, and you don't want to miss this opportunity to receive all four of best-selling author Donna Howell's works, 
along with the remarkable Deluxe Collector's King James Version of the Bible that includes the ancient apocryphal books of Enoch, Jubilees, and 15 more ancient texts. In fact, order numerous sets to give away to every Bible enthusiast and student you know. The Handmaiden's Conspiracy promotional offer. Order now at the Skywatch TV store or call 1-844-750-4985. 